first of all, if you're gonna watch this video, I'm assuming that at least the car can be started and run. Also over here you have first video you should watch and the, after installing the Megascord and that's uh, setting base timing, especially for Miatas. If you have problems with idle, this video over here will help you uh, set it up correctly. You got two computers, one in the car for uh, uploading the Megascord file and to uh, record the data and then I got another computer that I use at home for uh, analyzing them. So I keep everything on the memory stick. Over here I'm going to show you a couple important things before we start actually uh, uploading and analyzing and recording data. So I turn on my favorite one, choose my year and then I'm without uh, air flow meter, I use the map and then air temperature sensor. Right now we're not connected to the car, so I'm going to say here yes, go offline. And obviously we don't need to burn it into the ECU since we're not connected. What I want to show you is the air fuel t uh, ratio targets. And if you don't see air fuel ratio here, but volts, that means that your O2 sensor is not set up correctly in the settings. This is especially important section for uh, daily drivers. Anything in the region below 100 and about below 4500 uh, RPMs, that's for the Miata. In other cars will be will be a speed of the engine in top gear and uh, around 75-80 miles per hour. That's your cruising speed kind of thing. And everything over there, basically it's like 14.7 because you want to have best performance without wasting gas. Notice on my graphs above 100, there's a quick change to 105 because that's where you start going into boost. So I have an extreme change between the 14.7s to start going, getting richer and richer. Also, same thing on the RPMs, only changes between 4,500 to 4,600. It start getting you know richer and richer, and that's for safety. And also at the low RPMs and you know wide open throttle, I put it over richer too because that's where you kind of take off from line and your car will struggle a little bit. So you want to give him a little more fuel. And then I go much richer at the top end, even to 11 to 1 ratio just for safety and actually the air fuel ratio map is not what computer uses to tell you injectors how much to throw fuel into the mixture but your volumetric efficiency does that and those are the numbers that we're going to be calculating using uh, uh, the data that we're going to collect it during a run so air fuel ratio table you input the numbers that you wanted the car to be at certain points but volumetric efficiency, it's actually the, the numbers that computer uses to calculate how much fuel to inject into the mixture. In your exhaust gas settings, you want to take the authority down to 1 or 0 because you don't want the oxygen sensor telling a computer to change fuel mixtures because you're recording to set the actual base map so you don't want to be getting false readings and then once you have a nice base uh, map then you can bring it back to five or so and here's the uh, the last table that's really important and that's your ignition advance and I hope you found some uh, similar car maybe or you're running off of the original one from Megascore or something like that because that's very important and I hope you did your homework on this one or you at least have a really good one that you're using so next we're gonna put the laptop in the car hook up my USB. And remember the cable that goes from Megascore to USB, the port that you're going to use for USB, it's going to be always the same. You cannot use different ports. It's kind of set up this way. And then I hook up my memory stick. Then we start the car. go to my memory stick again and turn on the map that I want to use. 
but this time I upload the new data to the car. It will skip a beat couple times while it's changing the maps. Okay, now we're good. We're gonna uh, start data logging. Hit record and I put my hours on the memory stick and I just na number them 1, 2 and 3 and 4 just to easier find because once you use it and analyze it you usually don't need it so you can overwrite them. And now we're ready to go for a run. And make sure when you go for a run that your coolant temperatures reaches the optimal te running temperature usually that's 160 Fahrenheit or 165. Take a car for a spin and do like you know a couple of good minutes of driving it's good to drive the way you're gonna drive for that map so if you just doing like a daily driver map just do your regular day daily driver enter the highway exit the highway go through a couple lights stuff like that if you go for racing you know take your laptop with you and, and do everything over there at the races then once you're done just uh, shut down the program and turn off the car. Now I use a Mac to actually uh, analyze the data but it's pretty much basically the same on PC. Maybe the buttons just look a little different. So I copy my Megascore file to the desktop, the same one that I was using in the car and replace it, I already have it. Just to be sure that you're using the correct one. Then I open my um, mega log viewer. Then we uh, open the log we just did with the car. You may not see these tables over here. If you don't see them, you have to open mega squirt file and you open the one that we've been just using in the car. If it's your first time, make sure to select correct uh, wide band oxygen sensor. We have a big variety. I use the default one. Next, on the bottom, you have a, a timeline. You pull it all the way to the end. See what happens sometimes. Uh, your oxygen sensor may actually overheat and it will shut it down. So, you want to check that your end data actually still shows you air fuel ratios. Or if it doesn't, you got to find a spot where the oxygen sensor actually shut itself down and then write the second number down. Next you open VE analyzer and switch it to advanced settings. Make sure your wideband oxygen sensor is selected. Here if for some reason your oxygen sensor shut down before the end uh, you can click here and uh, put the number of seconds that you wrote down earlier. If not, just leave it as a log end. Next, if your oxygen sensor is about foot to three feet away, usually it will take about a second of delay. The cell changes kind of how much authority uh, the data has to change the cells of your uh, volumetric efficiency. If you're just starting, I would set it on hard or medium, maybe for one run, because when you put it in medium, it's just very extreme. And then hard is pretty good for first couple runs. And then once the car starts running really good, you can switch it to very hard for fine tuning. If you don't have that window, I uh, think uh, th there's some kind of default setting that's usually pretty good. But maybe it's also an older version of the program. This is your coolant temperature. 165 is about where uh, you know all the enrichment stuff shuts down and things are running very smooth. So that's where I start analyzing the data. Now you hit the run analysis. Now we'll display a couple of things for you, but really the most important one is the last one. You probably get much bigger numbers than what I just got, one. If you get to ones or twos, that means you're getting very close to getting your map almost perfect. So we hit OK. Then accept new table. And then you save mega squirt file. And that's that, turn off the program and uh, make sure to replace that thing you just saved back to your memory stick because that's where you're going to upload to the ECU 
unless you're using the same laptop for uh, analysis that you use for uh, data recording. And over here, here's a little checklist of all the steps you gotta go through. And you know, keep repeating the process until you satisfy with uh, your tuning and the car runs great. Hope this is helpful and uh, good luck.